scarves and gloves galore Extra layers, hey shut that door Just another winter resting blustery wintry day time isn't it very winter resting isn't it very grand chilly it will be interesting everyone has to plan the trees are bare as bare can be but sleds and skates what fun for me just another winter resting blustery wintry day of cocoa steam my face just another winter resting blustery wintry day very winteresting Was, wasn't it, friends? But it's so dark this time of year, and I'm sleepy. Well, I know. Today is the winter solstice. It's the shortest day of the year. And it's going to get dark very early. But after today, the days will start getting longer. But, Rascal, I think you're so tired because you're a chipmunk, and chipmunks hibernate. But they what? You hibernate. You remember you were collecting all that food in the winter, all your nuts, uh, oh. in the fall? And now you're going to go to sleep and take a nice winter's rest. And that's why I'm so sleepy. That is why oh. you're so sleepy. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I think we've lost him now. It is winter, and the world is full of snow. Inside, the fairies drink hot tea beside the fire's glow. Outside, all the trees are cold. They wait for spring's return. Let's go out and cheer them up. Having fun will make us warm. Every stick's a magic wand when we play pretend. Give a tree a nice warm hug. Tell them spring will come again. Goodbye, children. Happy New Year, my friends. David here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Did you know, according to the Farmer's Almanac, the second full moon of winter is known as the wolf moon. Named for howling wolves, it also represents new beginnings as the sun stays with us more and more each day. Some North American tribes call February the snow moon. March is named the worm moon for the earthworms starting to come out at the end of winter. As spring unfolds, April is known for the pink moon, with May the flower moon, and June the strawberry moon. Can you guess why? July is the buck moon, as new antlers begin to grow on deer bucks. The Algonquin people call August the sturgeon moon, due to the large number of fish in the Great Lakes. September's harvest moon is the full moon closest to the fall equinox, around September 22nd. The hunter's moon in October represents people hunting and preparing food for winter. The last full moon before winter begins is November's beaver moon, named for beavers, which become very active gathering their winter supplies. Lastly, there should be no surprise that December's full moon is called the cold moon. Do you have a special name you'd like to call a full moon? Hi.
Hi, I'm Star. I volunteer here at the Wolf Sanctuary of PA, a nonprofit sanctuary for gray wolves and wolf dogs in Lidditz, Pennsylvania. Today, I'd like to talk about the mysticism involving wolves and the moon. In stories and tales, wolves often get a bad rap, but they are not the creature that fairy tales make them out to be. They also do not have a magical connection to the moon. But the truth behind these myths is still pretty cool. To better understand the relationship between wolves and the moon, you need to know a little bit more about how they hunt. In the wild, gray wolves live a tough life and work hard to survive. When wolves go out on a hunt, they rally the pack together by howling. They may also howl to celebrate after making a kill. Despite being the apex predator in their ecosystem, they only succeed at hunting about 10 to 20% of the time. Having a good hunting strategy can really help even the odds. While they have an excellent sense of hearing and smell, their eyesight is only about as good as ours, with slightly better night vision. Wolves are not nocturnal, they are crepuscular, which means they are typically most active at dawn and dusk. The bright light of the moon can help a lot during a hunt, and during the full moon, howling can be heard more frequently as wolf packs head out for dinner. So while wolves may howl more often during the full moon, the reason has more to do with ecology than mysticism. You can learn more about the wolves of Speedwell at wolfsanctuarypa.org. Visit us for a tour or schedule a virtual visit to see the wolves and learn more about gray wolf ecology. What animal made these tracks? These are goose and duck tracks. Snow tracking. Here are some mystery tracks. The red fox walks a straight, straight line. Hi, I'm Jennifer with Exploration Delivered. I'm here today with Mac, who is going to show us all about how we make animal footprints in the winter with our special stamps. Hello, do you know which one is which? Coyote. Let's see what the coyote footprints look like. See what they look like? They look, that's what coyotes look like. Let's do raccoon. We feed the squirrels in the wintertime in our backyard, and they've left us little presents this morning. It's their footprints. Hey, boys and girls, Christy here with Sign Language. Today, we're going to be mixing sign language with a winter art project, and it's going to be all about winter. Oh, we'll start with four words. The first one is snow. The second one is put in your coat and your gloves and your hat. And the word for the day today is hat, because today we're doing an art project all about a hat. That's right, boys and girls, we're going to make a nice, warm, cozy hat to wear outside as we play in the snow. We have a couple of materials we need, some pom-poms from the craft store, some cotton balls, a Sharpie, a glue stick, and some crayons. And of course, we need a nice big piece of paper so we can draw our hat. And when you draw this hat, boys and girls, I want you to picture you wearing this big, warm hat outside when it's snowing and what your favorite color is that you're going to use to make this hat and to decorate it. And when I decorate this hat, what on earth are we going to do to make it as spectacular as this? How do we make these imprints and these special patterns? Well, let's see. I'll tell you a little secret. I went on a nature hunt and I found some very simple pine needles and I also found a leaf. 
a dried up old leaf and we're going to use both these materials to create it. So what do you suppose we do? We put them underneath our paper. That's right. And we want to set it. So when we run our hands across it, we can feel it because that's where we're going to do the coloring. That's how we get to make a special pattern, an imprint. And you start at the bottom and just go across. You just keep going back and forth and back and forth. And keep looking for that bumpy feeling. Because that bumpy feeling is what's going to create your special pattern. And you see as I'm moving up, you can see it getting bigger and bigger and better. And when it gets smooth, then you know that you've stopped and you don't have any further to go. Wow, look what I did. That's pretty cool. Let's see what else we have. Let's use our... Let's use our pine needle and put that under here too and see what happens. And I think I'm going to use a blue this time and just run all the way across and see what happens. Look, I'm seeing a completely different pattern and I'm mixing my colors too. So they're all running into each other. You can do it that way or you can keep them separate. Now see it's got smooth so I need to stop. But I'm going to take another color and just finish out my hat so that I have a really pretty. I love different colors and I like to mix them and make them fun. Oh, so there we got. There it is. Now, also, now we're going to put some nice, special, warm cotton at the bottom. And that's just where it would hit our forehead to keep us cozy and warm. There we go. And everybody has to have a big, fluffy pom-pom at the top and I'm going to do an orange one because it's my favorite. <laughs> I love bright colors. There. So here we go. Look boys and girls, I made a hat just like this one. You can cut it out if you like and put it on black paper and then add a little decoration just like that to make a picture perfect hat. Enjoy your winter craft. Bye-bye. got to be owls around here somewhere. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's a snowy owl. Come on, let's check it out. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, wow. Hello, Mr. Snowy Owl. Oh, hello. I, I'm Oliver the Owl. And who, I say, who are you? <laughs> well, I'm Val with Wildlife Adventures, and I'm a fan. I am really excited to see you. You don't usually come here to our area in Maryland. Well, it was very cold where I come from. Yes, you live up in Canada and north in the tundra, which is a big, open, very cold, without, you know, no trees area. Yes, it's true, it's true. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited that you're here. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, you have a lot of fans here, don't you? I do, I do. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's because you're so beautiful and white and large. You're the largest owl in North America. Oh, oh if you say so, yes. yes. <laughs> now, we have a lot of owls here, you know. You do. We you do. do different kinds of owls here in Maryland, and I was out trying to find them because that's a fun thing to do in the winter. Oh, and who do you find? Well, there's um, the little tiny owl that lives around here, and he would fit in this little tiny hole and tuck in, and you wouldn't even be able to see him in the tree. He's called the screech owl. Yeah, he's really cute, and he has a really funny call. Would you like to hear his call? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay, okay. He sounds like a horse, kind of. Oh. Yeah, it kind of goes, oh, Isn't that a funny sound? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, he's pretty, he's pretty oh. cool. And there's another owl here that lives in barns, um, and therefore it's named the barn owl. It actually is a cavity. He likes to be in a cavity or nesting. And um, he might look, people might think they see you if they see a barn owl because he has white under his wings. Like you're all white. You're beautiful. Yeah, but he's very scary if you hear his call. Oh, let's hear it. Oh, are you not going to be scared? No, no, no. Okay, okay. All right, let's do it. So he sounds like... That is quite scary. Isn't that scary? He has the nickname the ghost owl. Yeah, because of his white and farmers would see him at night and they make that crazy noise. It's very scary. And then the one that we would probably see the most around here is called the barred owl. And the barred owl has stripes 
on his chest, hence the bars. And he's a medium size owl, so not as large as you, Oliver. And his sound sounds kind of like a monkey, I think. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty funny. You want to hear it? Yes. yes. Okay, he goes, woo, 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 woo. Woo, 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 woo. Yes, I've heard that here. Have you heard that one? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. And they are usually calling to their mates and defining their territories this time of year because they're building a nest and laying their eggs. Oh, God, they're babies. Yes, exactly. Yes, you, Snowy Owls, you do that during the summer. Yes. Up, yeah, up in Canada. It's and a bit warmer then. Yes, it is. Definitely is. We'll see you in part two for more learning about owls with Oliver. Hi, Nora. I was so glad to join you. Aw, I'm so happy to see you, precious. And I'm wearing my scarf. I see, it's beautiful. So it, colorful. Uh -huh. it, it's all so very winteresting. I do declare, I, I think the day just got a little longer. Did you feel it? No, you did not feel the earth move, precious. Oh, but I can, I, I, I can. I think what you felt was the sleigh move that we're in. It's our first time inside of a real live sleigh. Oh hey, my goodness. I know. I do declare. <laughs> Friends, come back for part two, and we're going to go on a sleigh ride. Oh, yes. Hi,